It's, it's really, really uh, an interesting take on education and using the metaphor of being a DJ as a teacher. I think about this conversation about cultural responsiveness, right? This is Blair Durham with Black Wall Street Today, your media hub for all things black entrepreneurship, politics, news, and events in Hampton Roads and beyond. When I say black, y'all say Wall Street. Black, black, Wall Street. Black, Wall Street. Black, Wall Street. Welcome back. It's the 105th edition of Black Wall Street Today with Blair Durham. It's time now for a conversation with Dr. Sean Woodley. He's dedicated his professional career to education. He's a decorated K-12 teacher, university professor, and author. Dr. Woodley's deep passion and research has allowed him great success as an educator and entrepreneur. He's the architect behind the educator movement, Teach, Hustle, Inspire, and has written the best-selling book, MC Means Move the Class, How to Spark Engagement and Motivation in Urban and Culturally Diverse Classrooms. In both education and life itself, Dr. Woodley believes in having fun. He educates with love, enthusiasm, motivation, and hustle. Welcome to the show, Dr. Woodley. How are you? I'm doing so well. Thank you so much for having me. I really, really appreciate the opportunity to share this space with you and engage in this conversation. Thank you. I appreciate you being here. Um, I am a <laughs> retired educator. I worked in mm-hmm. an urban school environment and so definitely excited to learn about the work that you're doing, partnering with school districts to provide this, I believe it's a, a much needed training. So if you would, mm-hmm. talk a little bit more about the work that you're doing and the impact that you're having. Sure. Well, uh, what I do primarily is I help school districts, whether it is working with the district itself, whether it is working with a school or certain schools or even at the teacher level. So I help essentially at at a fundamental level, even the playing field. You know, a lot of times the way that we as educators are taught to teach our students and a lot of times the ways that we as educators experience schools, it puts certain students at an advantage and others at a disadvantage naturally. Yes. Um, what my primary focus is, is to work with schools that are mostly in urban and culturally diverse communities to help, as I mentioned, level that playing field, to shift the practices, to shift the thinking, to shift what we actually do and how we engage to unlock our students' intellectual treasure. A lot of teachers, I, I wholeheartedly believe, and I and I and you know, we get into the classroom, and I believe that every single teacher that walks through those doors wants to make a difference in the lives of their students. I believe that every single teacher wants to engage and capture and motivate their students in every way possible. But the tools that we have to do this are limited. And unless we shift that focus, unless we put those tools in the hands of the educators that so desperately need it, serving in urban and culturally diverse communities, someone is going to be disadvantaged. And nine times out of 10, it's going to be a student of color. Yes. I think about this conversation about cultural responsiveness, right? Mm-hmm. We're looking at the fact that, you know, our, our our young black males are especially vulnerable. There's an mm-hmm. absence of black male teachers. And in that way, a lot of times the the uh, rapport building, right, it it just isn't there. You know, you're talking Mm -hmm. about, again, what you just highlighted, the fact that uh, the ways in which we've learned to teach don't necessarily speak to the lived experiences of the individuals Mm -hmm. that we're teaching. So what does something like your culturally responsive curriculum do for a teacher who is just out of touch? Not because, like you said, not because they want to be. They do want Mm -hmm. to be different, but they're out of touch just by default. How how does engaging with your materials uh, help them? Several ways. Uh, Number one, by exposing them to the facts, and and this is not just theory, but exposing them to the facts of how we are raised, how we experience life, and our experiences with school, be it positive or negative impact, what we do from the student side and from the teaching side. One of the big focuses of 
the development that I do with teachers. And it can vary from place to place and person to person, but we have a strong focus and groundwork in self-reflection um, to peel back the layers to uncover maybe any biases that we have. We all have them, but at what level and how is it impacting what you're doing in the classroom? We also have a deep dive into culture. A lot of times what happens is culture is thought of in regards to language, in regards to food, in regards to the clothes that we wear, even the music that we listen to. And unfortunately, when it stops there, we don't realize that those aspects of culture are often, are, excuse me, are extremely surface. Yeah. Culture goes below the surface, several layers. When you start to get into concepts of time, mm. concepts of eye contact, concepts of brain function and how you make sense of the world, mm -hmm. now and how this affects cognitive processing, mm -hmm. now you begin to understand, all right, I see it this way. My students see that same exact thing, not in a bad way, just a different way. And a lot of times what we don't realize is that this, this culture is essentially a lens through which we view and examine the world. And we operate from this. It's a set of unwritten rules. I, as a teacher, have, I operate from a set of unwritten rules. You as a student, you operate from a set of unwritten rules. And when those don't align, now we have an issue. Now this is where forms of perceived disrespect come in from the teaching side or from the student side, yep. operating from rules that are unwritten. And, and I'll give you a perfect example. If you've ever been in a situation, like you might be, let's say, you go inside, back when we, back when we can go outside to a restaurant, you go inside to McDonald's, all right? Mm -hmm. And you're standing in line, facing the register, you're looking up at the menu, kind of decide, all right, I think I'm gonna get this uh, quarter pound of meal, let me, get, let me get cheese on that. You're, you're processing, you know, what's going on, and you kind of have a sense, you urge somebody behind you is standing too close to you. You, you know, you can just feel, you can feel when someone is in your space and you look and you turn around and you immediately, there's a side eye going, why are you so close to me? Right. Excuse me, sir. Back up. That, that concept of space, that concept of, of, of personal space is something that is at a cultural level. What that person did was violate your personal space. That is something that's a learned behavior that is cultural. Yep. But the thing about it is no one ever sat down and told you, don't let anyone within that 36 inch bubble around you. Three feet. Everybody right. has to say right. three feet. It's, it's a learned behavior. That learned behavior has an emotional charge to it. Sure. That experience that you just had at McDonald's with somebody standing too close to you, immediately it's, 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 it's whoa, hold, hold on, back up here. There's an emotion, boom, has an automatic reaction. Think about that now in space of when you translate that to the classroom where there's some sort of violation, even unintended. Your intent might be good, but the impact may work against you. So now that you have these emotional charges that occur one after the other after the other, that student is now be becoming in a position where they are defensive or the opposite. That student says or does something to offend it's perceived disrespect that teacher. And now that teacher is in a position to discipline, unfortunately, that student. This is why we have an imbalance in the data as far as disciplinary actions for black students and students of color versus white Boy. students. A lot of that can be traced back to perceptions of what counts as respect and what doesn't. So you know, examine I'm those things. Dr. Mm -hmm. Woodley, and I'm just thinking, not to cut you off, but we can't mm -hmm. get you across this nation fast enough, right? <laughs> I'm thinking about the times in which we find ourselves now and mm -hmm. some of the bias that has gone into the ways in which students are expected to engage virtually, right? Correct. A lack of consideration for the fact that I may not have, you know, a nice, neat office, you know, in which to 
in which to kind of enjoy this this classroom moment yeah. where my camera is expected to be on or, you know, where I'm expected to kind of, you know, it just, there's so many layers even in that. And then mm-hmm. how are teachers receiving training to ensure that students can optimize this experience in accordance with what is best for them? Um, right. so how, how are you finding yourself helping now? What are the kinds of um, kind of practical ways in which you are assisting school districts? One of the key things that we are focusing on right now is in, in addition to the instructional strategies and practices that we talk about as far as understanding culture and ways that we can engage, engage and motivate our students to excel and achieve in school, we also really have to be sure that we're taking time to focus on the educators. 2020 is... <laughs> for lack of a better phrase in this moment, a year to remember. And as educators, and I'm sure you can attest to this, you know, we're naturally givers. We're naturally people that pour into the lives of others. It, it is a part of who we are. It is what we do inside and outside of the classroom. Too often we give to a fault. We don't ever take the time to pour back in ourselves. So one of our strong focuses as of late has been to improve and increase the mental wellness of educators. How can we incorporate practices of mindfulness, increase happiness and cognitive abilities and and strengthen the resilience and resolve for everything that we have to do already compounded by everything that is happening in addition to everything that already does teaching virtually or hybrid teaching teaching new students that have not experienced learning in this way, again, on top of everything that we already have to do, and we haven't even talked about home life yet. Right. We are adjusting on all levels of our lives. In real time. Exploring exploring all of these things helps us to, it won't make it go away, but it helps us to deal with it in a way that we can respond better to it so that physiologically it doesn't affect us as it would if we didn't have these practices in place. Yeah, man, that's key. That's key. So how do I connect with you if I'm interested in support either for my school or for my school district? Sure. You can find me at my website. It's teachhustleinspire.com. Um, and you'll find all the information as far as how to reach me. There's a link where we can schedule a time to talk and really peel back the layers to see what the needs are for a district and or uh, a, an administrator in the schools. It varies so much from person to person and school to school. Um, and also even email. I can be emailed directly at Sean at teachhustleinspire.com. That's S-H-A-U-N at teachhustleinspired.com. Perfect. Let's talk about the book. We've got about Mm four minutes remaining. Uh, Let's hear about MC Means Move the Class. Uh, Sure. Who's organized and who's going to kind of get the most out of it and then all of those things. Absolutely. Well, this is really a reflection of my life's work and growth as an educator. Um, What happened really was I was a a student at Hampton University, and once I graduated, I started teaching locally in an urban school district, and while I was actually teaching full-time, I was also working DJ. I used to actually DJ at WHOV, coincidentally. Oh, wow. And mm -hmm, (laughs) I I was growing in both professions at the same time. You know, I'm, I'm growing year in and year out as a DJ, growing year in and year out as an educator, so I started to really uncover some similarities in both of those professions. You know, I'm in a one-to-many environment, trying to move the crowd and trying to move the class. I am also a source of motivation. I'm trying to get these people to dance and move. I'm trying to get these students to learn and, and engage with this content. So the book uncovers a lot of those parallels and talks about how we as educators can use those principles of raising student achievement, increasing self-awareness and and self-motivation, 
um, building uh, authentic, engaging relationships with our students, as well as uh, using creativity to fuel uh, all of this. It, it's really, really uh, an interesting take on education and using the metaphor of being a DJ as a teacher. I've got to ask you this, too. That's, that's a sure. powerful concept. <laughs> And actually, parenthetically, our uh, producer says he thinks he knows you, so we have to make sure that you are connected. Okay. <laughs> uh, I am thinking about, so I was a special educator, and mm -hmm. I was, of course, responsible for the case management uh, services for about 35 students. Uh, I also taught three blocks. Uh, daily, I was an inclusion teacher. I had some self-contained experiences. It was there. There was a lot happening, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's this issue of um, of of your work, your life work, right? Which clearly we cannot afford to ignore. How does and and where does uh, a teacher get to? engage with what you are providing. Is this a uh, professional development kind of exercise that happens over mm -hmm. the course of the summer? Are you mm -hmm. coming in to provide in services? I'm just thinking about the very real experience of the life of a teacher. What yeah. can make this uh, tangible? Sure. In several ways. Okay. Um, this can be taken in with the learning that happens with the book. And, of course, that can be read as needed on your own time. Yeah. Um, also, there are experiences. Uh, one of the most common ways that I'm brought into schools is to work um, at in a one-to-many environment, uh, professional development, staff development sessions, and even working one-on-one -on -one with educators that need extra support. Uh, that, that administrator can't be in all places at one time, so that is definitely one way as well as the Educators Academy that I have. It is an online learning platform that ah. breaks down all of the concepts uh, in the book and beyond to help instructors, uh, ex excuse me, help teachers be more culturally responsive instructors online and practitioners. Academy. Perfect. Mm -hmm. That is a self-paced uh, exercise to really, over the course of four weeks, grow your practice and and really help you to be able to move the academic needle. Wonderful. That is the answer to my question. <laughs> hey, this has been great. We are, man, at the end of our time. I would love to have you back on the show to talk more about the work that you're sure. doing as it evolves. This is fantastic. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so, so much for having me. For sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. This show is brought to you by Positive Vibes Incorporated, our consulting services. We do credit fixes, tax resolution, we lend private money to real estate investors, and we do debt consolidations. Basically, we put money in your pocket when you need money. We put money in your pocket when you need money. 757-932-0177. Throughout the United States, credit fixes, tax resolution, lending private money to real estate investors, and debt consolidation. 757-932-0177. Phenomenal. Stay with us online at Black Wall Street Today on Facebook and Black Wall Street Today on Instagram. And then follow us on Twitter as well at BWS Today. We look forward to talking again next week. Have a wonderful week. I have said and I will continue to say that the most important priority for the black community is the black community, not a particular political party. Phenomenal. Hey, yo, when I say black, you say Wall Street. What? Black Wall Street. When I say black, you say Wall Street. Black. Black. When I say black, you say Wall Street. <laughs>